complex change. It's like, how do you know you're left-handed or right-handed? You just, you know. From he to she. It was my face. It was something physically that needed to be changed. From she to he. It's just funny. I'm more in touch with my female side now. In the 21st century, there have never been so many ways to choose your gender. A feminine woman, a masculine woman, a feminine man, a masculine man. But for many, it's the choice between life or death. If you don't treat it, life really isn't worth living. Two people, one man, one woman, are about to transform their lives. It scares me to think about what if this were not able to happen. With medicine closing the gender gap. We changed lives uh, so dramatically. The demand for change has never been greater. of passage for when a boy becomes a man. I mean, I wanted to so bad when I was little, but you can't really control what your body does. And when a woman is becoming a man, something as ordinary as shaving takes on new importance. Shaving is a really fun masculine ritual to do. It's very validating as a man. Um, and it's one of the things that's sort of like a rite of passage in adolescence that I always wanted, and I could never experience that when I was like 14. This is Aiden. For 24 years, Aiden has been living with the body of a woman. But that's about to change. You know, I look in that mirror, and the face I see staring back is the face that I've always dreamed that I could have. This is Michael. You know, I got. 20 or 30 years of my life left, and to finally get to live it as what I've chosen is, is a dream. It's only makeup, but it makes a lifetime of difference to a man who is about to step out for the first time as a woman. It's a defining moment, and it is the first day of my new life that I will be Michelle. Michael have arrived at a moment of truth in their respective lives. They have made the decision to cross gender. It's a really scary step to take, to change from one gender to the other and then step out into the world. Having this surgery is sort of the last step and not only will I feel male, but I will look male. And I'm frankly terrified, <laughs> but excited at the same time. I'm just so confident this is what I want to do. For Michael and Aiden, changing physical gender is not about envy of the opposite sex. They don't see themselves trading in their bodies for a better model. The dream is to simply become an ordinary man or woman. We want to just be another face in the crowd that you don't take a second look at. People will look at my face and like the rest of my body and then they will definitely look at my chest to try to figure out what gender I am. Just to be accepted as a woman like I feel inside and not get a second glance or a second look or, or have anyone question what I ever was. I mean, I need that so badly to just be able to go out, take a walk, not have to worry about how I look or who's looking at me, um, and just have like a normal life, you know, that's it. Aiden started life as April. She always knew what she wanted to be when she grew up. Being transgendered is, uh, it's like there's no gray area at all um, in terms of my gender, and there never was. Like I definitely knew from my first memory that I was a boy, and that has never wavered. <laughs> Aiden is about to have chest reconstruction surgery. It's a big step. Just out onto the steps. Until now, transition from female to male has amounted to heavy doses of testosterone. Having this operation, I'm hoping to achieve just an ability to have a normal life where I've always had to try to hide my chest. It's really my goal to appear masculine and you know, appear as a man, but really in a larger sense, it's just more important for me to be completely okay with my entire body, which I haven't been before. Aiden's breasts will be removed, and the chest of a man will be created from the remaining tissue. 
It's a big, drastic decision, and I'm aware that it's unchangeable and life-altering. And I have had sort of brief, irrational questions, you know, am I doing the right thing? And every time, I've just immediately known that it is. And there's just no doubt. I'm not even scared. There is no accurate estimate of the number of female to male transsexuals living in America. It's thought to be about one in 30,000 people, but there may be many more who are invisible to those making estimates. A lot of female-bodied people can live as men without presenting to the medical establishment, they, so they don't change their bodies. They don't come forward for surgery, they don't get counted. By comparison, male to female transgenders tend to be more visible in society. The best estimate is that there are between 10 to 12,000 women in the United States who used to be men. Considering the number of people I've met, uh, I would say that the numbers are probably much higher than are being, being counted. Michael is waiting for his new life to begin. He is 48 years old, is into his second marriage, and has four children. Just getting married and siring children is my attempt to live to fulfill that role model that everyone expected me to be. A year ago, Michael made the decision to become Michelle. It started with hormone therapy. He knows gender change will come at a cost. I think of all the things I can lose, and it's a lot, it's everything I've worked for all of my life, but not being true to myself is a far worse sentence to me than, than losing all of that. Michael's left his home in the Midwest to come to San Francisco for the next phase of his transition. Hi, how are you? Hi. I'm Ann Brogan. Nice to meet you. Yes, you too. Welcome. Welcome Thank to you. our great shopping day today. Excited. Good. Anne Grogan is a style counselor. Her specialty is the transgender community. Good. She'll be helping Michael prepare for the moment he comes out as a woman. Clothing. Everyone has a clothing personality. Yeah. It can be classic, flirty, ingenue, romantic, sporty. And we want to get a little closer to what fits for you. Uh -huh. All right, are you ready? Yes. We have a lot to accomplish. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. I have to I have to mention this first. I love this color. Yes, <laughs> good. You're color. pink. I like pink, too. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's hold it up and look. In my lifetime, yes, this is the bravest thing I've ever had to do. You know, it's 95% confidence. And I'm not going to pass all the time. I know that. So it is, to a degree, you need to become thick-skinned. The one issue might be as you undergo electrolysis, you will notice some redness on your face. Sometimes wearing a salmon color or red color actually brings out the redness rather than minimizes it. See, I don't know about this. Stuff, well, so. you're knowing. Are you listening? Yes, I am. OK. <laughs> ah, a sale rack. Ah, what woman doesn't like to go to a sale rack? Now let's see, you, we think you're about a 10 in a dress size. Uh, that, it depends Perhaps. on the shoulders. It depends on the shoulders. Yeah. It uh, seems to me in my experience that it has become a crucial step for those at the initial phase of transition. This is the phase when they don't know exactly how to appear in public. What we're doing is giving them permission to simply experiment and explore, much the way that little girls explore. And we try to find what is our style in the world, what are we comfortable with. I love this necklace. And get it. This is very feminine. And also this creates a very nice appearance or illusion of a bosom. Uh -huh. The only cautionary note is... This is new to Michael. He has never worn the clothes of a woman in public. Oh, that's cute. Is that how it's supposed to feel? I've dressed up as a woman and stayed within the confines and safety of my own house, but I've never been outside in the public view as a woman. To qualify for chest reconstruction surgery, Aiden had to first meet certain requirements. All of the patients that I operate on have been through some form of therapy, uh, psychosexual counseling, evaluation, and therapy. Hi. Hi. How are you? 
Dr. Michael Brownstein will be Aiden's surgeon for the chest reconstruction. Okay, are you nervous? A little bit. Not that much. Good. I'm not. Good. I'm glad you're not. When you... The goal of the operation really is to remove the female breast tissue, excess skin, and make male appearing areola and nipples by size and position. So they have a basic flat male chest appearance. You'll be going home wrapped in a binder, and you'll have two drains, one on each side of your chest. Don't expect the drainage to be the same on both sides. It rarely is. Okay. Also, don't expect the pain to be the same on both sides. Okay. It rarely is. Somebody might be prompted to ask, like, why are you doing this to yourself? It costs a good deal of money. It's painful. It's hard to recover from. Uh, you're scarred for life physically. I mean, the scars will fade but never go away. We'll and answer. to that, I guess I can only answer that this is so important to me that I'm willing to go through all of that just to have something that I really need. The staff is excellent, and they're very sensitive. Okay. Competent. Oh, I think Aiden is a good candidate in the sense uh, that he appears male, and his mannerisms are male. The desire to dress in the clothing of the opposite sex does not make a person transsexual. The way Michael sees it, there is a big difference between transsexual and transvestite. Transvestite or crossdresser is okay with their gender. They want these occasional chances to live as the other gender by dressing. The transsexual needs to change their body, and it's a constant thing. It's not something they do in, in episodes or in phases. You know, it's, it's constant. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Today has been a breakthrough for Michael. Tomorrow, he'll push his transition even further. to crossing gender. Hormones are a godsend for us. Estrogen, testosterone, laser therapy, electrolysis, chest reconstruction, genital modification, phalloplasty, hysterectomy, testicular implants, cranial surgery, and so forth. Those who choose the road to gender change through surgery are well aware there is no way back. Yeah, my chest is a constant reminder. Um, you can't not look at it. Um, I can't avoid it when I'm dressing. Um, it's just out there, and it's definitely a constant, everyday reminder that I'm not the gender I want to be. Aiden is hooked on hormones. The first physical or like medical step for transitioning is taking testosterone. The changes started almost immediately. Um, my skin got more oily. I noticed that right away. Um, and then over time, I have noticed that my face has changed shape. I've begun growing facial hair. Also, my muscle mass has shifted uh, so that I'm able to build muscle pretty quickly. Um, my hips have pretty much gone away. And that'll only change over time in, in the same way. myths about the effects of testosterone on the body and the mind. Before long, Aiden was starting to feel like an alpha male. I felt immediately a lot more dissociation with my emotions. Not the kind where I couldn't experience them, but I could choose not to. Um, in a way that I assume is pretty masculine, where if something was bothering me, but I had something immediate I needed to deal with, um, I could sort of put those you know, emotions on hold to a degree that I'd never been able to before. After a month or two, the aggressiveness kicked in, which has been good and bad. Um, sometimes I'm driving and I just, you know, I get this road rage I never used to have before. Get this thing. Aiden's reaction to testosterone is not unusual. It's ironic, but the experience of transsexuals is helping to solve one of the age-old questions about the sexes. <laughs> what I found in giving hormones to people who are transgender, that during their tra transition, that surprisingly, um, many of the stereotypical behaviors that we have kind of 
struggled with and possibly denied about men and women actually turn out to be true. It's surprising to me how consistent the shift in people's emotional experience and their ability to express their emotions really changes with hormones. It's quite dramatic. Masculinity and femininity are thought by many to be learned behaviors. Put a girl in a dress. Show her how other girls act, and she'll become feminine, too. Not so, says Dr. Kohler. The effect of hormone therapy suggests that the gender mold is cast before birth. I think that it really has given me a window to understand uh, the ways that men and women are, are really are just biologically, physiologically different, and to uh, appreciate that. I think that it, it actually will probably help us all sort of understand the male and female dynamic if we start to look at the biology and understand um, the roots of our behavior. Okay, I'm on hormones, yes. Michael has been on estrogen for over a year. It's hormone therapy for male to female transsexuals. What have you noticed so far? face is smoother, skin is softer, the body hair actually is reduced a lot, and the beard seems to grow actually slower, about half as fast. I don't know, maybe that's just wishful thinking on my part. I mean, I do think... Today, Michael's slow, taking the next step in his transition. People, um, this will be his first session of hair removal by electrolysis. Slower than the face it is essential to remove the beard. It not only gets rid of the five o'clock shadow, but it changes the texture of the facial skin as well. Yeah, if you can imagine somebody sticking electric needles in your face, I don't imagine it feels very good. I'm gonna insert the probe into the follicle. I'm starting you out at a good, moderate current. To remove the hair, an electrical current is passed down a needle inserted deep into each individual hair follicle. Mm -hmm. That hair just slipped out, no resistance. Mm -hmm. It's causing enough tissue destruction so that that follicle doesn't have the cells or the papilla to cause a hair to grow in that follicle. No, this isn't as bad as I thought it would be. There are 1,270 follicles or hair pits on the beard area alone. Michael is facing 12 to 18 months of electrolysis to complete the treatment. Okay, here's some ice for you. And you can just hold it on the treatment area for 15 or 20 minutes. Electrolysis can cost anywhere between $150 to $200 for a two-hour session. Exactly. Okay. When doing a full beard, it's a lot of hair. And it is a serious commitment uh -huh. to have it all removed. And it does work. Michael will have to invest thousands to be beard free. It is something that is expensive. It takes time and commitment on your part. Yeah, no, that's what transition is all about, committing to yourself. And it's not just electrolysis, but therapy and hormones and ultimately the surgery. So I'm committed to, to going through with it. Beautiful. Michael is spending two days in San Francisco to jumpstart his transition to female. There's still a lot of work to be done before he returns home to face his family and decide on his future. That's incredible. Yeah. Wendy didn't know there was a difference between boys and girls until she was five. Until then, she just assumed she was a boy. But from that point, Wendy began to realize just how different she was. Nature goofs sometimes, there's glitches. I couldn't find my place because I was in the wrong place to start with. But you can move forward if you know which way you're facing. Wendy is now Lucas. For years, Lucas felt out of step with the world and it was all because his body did not match his brain. This is who I am, this is how I've always been to myself, and now you guys get to see it too. Lucas is 50 years old, lives in Vancouver, Canada, and has completed his transition from female to male. 
I've just blossomed. I've, I've just come into my own, outside and inside. I've been able to grow up in a way that I would have never been able to grow up before. I've been able to take my place and, and just show up for life. Lucas struggled with gender conflict until the age of 40. Even his father had come to accept that his daughter needed to be his son. He used to say I should have been born a boy. But then when it became, well, good news and bad news, Dad, the good news is I figured out a way to do that. Um, you know, he suddenly reverted to very sentimental feelings about his daughter, understandably. You know, he was in his 80s and it was a stretch for him. But he knew what it meant. He knew that for me that meant completion. In 1998, after two years of hormone therapy, Lucas had a double mastectomy and chest reconstruction. I knew it was uh, something I needed to have, and it's, it's just back to how do you know you're left-handed. I just knew that I needed to do this. It's something that those of us that pursue chest reconstruction, it takes a while to sit with your chest back or just wearing a T-shirt. It's just such a foreign, freeing experience. Five years later, he underwent the most radical of sex reassignment surgeries, an 11-hour operation to complete his transition to manhood. Well, because I was a man born without a penis, really, and uh, the world doesn't revolve around that, but it's certainly part of it, the same as if I was missing an ear or one of my hands. I'd want the nearest replica as possible so that it could do what it was expected to do. The operation is called a phalloplasty. Plastic surgeons first excised a large piece of Lucas's forearm. They then fashioned it into a penis, using his female genitalia to preserve its sensitivity and function. Finally, a skin graft was taken from his thigh to repair the arm. It's a difficult procedure. It's intricate. It's, um, it's very three-dimensional because, I mean, you're changing uh, completely the aspect of something. It's not like putting a bone graft or, or uh, doing a nose. It's a controversial operation or series of operations. On a scale of one to 10, probably the phalloplasty is, the, is 10, being the hardest. Phalloplasties can cost tens of thousands of dollars. Tissue has to be harvested from two other parts of the body, leaving scarring, and its performance is not perfect. My closest friends were worried about me because they were concerned that I was going to do something irreversible and it was going to again be not the right thing. There are other choices for female to male transsexuals. Jameson Green elected to have a metaoidioplasty. In simple terms, the surgeon creates a smaller version of a penis from female genitals. If you want a phallus that has natural erectile capacity, you're going to end up with a two to four inch phallus because that's what metoidioplasty can produce. And uh, that's the, the basic difference is size and erectile capacity. Lauren Cameron is also a trans man. He decided against any genital surgery chest modification and testosterone made him the man he is today. You know, we all have this gender discomfort, this body discomfort in degrees. And there's a whole range of people. The, 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 the guys that go for the metoidioplasties are a little bit more uncomfortable than I am. The guys that go for the phalloplasties are even yet more uncomfortable than the guys that get metoidioplasties. Some guys who feel like me, who say, oh, I'll never get genital surgery, some years down the road might decide otherwise. So it's a process. You know, technology is ever-changing, and some of us are just waiting it out. We're waiting to see, well, God, things are happening very quickly. What will things be like in 10 years? I might have a whole different option. But for Lucas, his transition would not be complete until he had the whole package. For me, my sense of self as a man involves having all the accessories. Uh, this is all about my journey and what I need to feel fully like a man. I need you to sit up and face me. Okay. 
Genital surgery is not an option for Aiden. Yeah, sit up real straight. Mm -hmm. Right now, the only thing he's thinking about is a new chest. The straighter you are now, the straighter everything. Oh, God, pressure's on, right? <laughs> it's all on you. <laughs> Dr. Michael Brownstein is one of America's leading chest reconstruction surgeons. I definitely understand why my patients want this operation, and I've learned over, over the years uh, to appreciate how important this is to them. I feel great. I feel pretty relaxed. I feel a little nervous, but I'm um, very confident. Uh, just hopefully not too much pain is really what I'd like. Okay. We've been cleared for takeoff, so okay, I'm going to put your C3 tables in the upright position. Right away, we I know this procedure is irreversible, and I can never go back. And you have to understand that this is something that, like, from the day that I began puberty, I've just longed for, with never a day that I liked my chest and never a day that I thought it was great to have, that there's no question in my mind. The operation is in two stages. Aiden's breasts will be removed. Then Dr. Brownstein will graft the nipples back onto Aiden's new chest. We're dissecting the breast tissue and subcutaneous tissue up to the upper extent of the breast. We'll be finished closing the incisions and then we'll mark out location for the areolar grafts. Let's try to get it as symmetrical as possible. Joanne, you want to check this? Uh -huh. Aiden's new nipple will be exactly the size of a nickel because that's what he's using to measure it. Not bad, huh? No, no, yeah. I think the goal is to make the chest as natural as you possibly can and, and as unremarkable as you possibly can. I mean, you can't avoid scars. That's one of the penalties of surgery. Two and a half hours later, Aiden has a new chest. So we finish suturing in the graft and uh, the operation is complete. It's very important to these patients that they have the surgery to facilitate their transition from female to male. I think without it, it would be almost impossible. I think it's a crucial operation and I'm glad to be able to do it. Today has been a giant leap forward for Aiden. His recovery will take a few weeks. Then he can finally be the man he always wanted to be. This is oil controlling lotion that will help to control the shine. Mm -hmm. I'm putting a shadow right here to help straighten out the line of the nose. Before becoming a woman, Michael has to first unlearn everything he knows about being a man. God, that is just huge. I cannot believe you can do that with just makeup and, you know, it's just amazing. This makes an amazing difference in your body shape. It sure does. And the balance... It's been an intensive shape. course with gender style counselor Ann Grogan. Back, the back bow's facing right. your back, and then open up your bow. When first I met Michael, he walked very quickly. He headed in a beeline for uh, products. He grabbed at things. It was much more abrupt movement, uh, much more linear. I saw it. We were walking down that aisle. Boy, we were going shopping just like a man shops. Let's go for it. Let's get it. Let's get it done with and over with. This is a great kind of a piece of jewelry for you. The gender makeover has covered everything from dress sense to makeup voice work to body movement. So women tend to walk like that. By the conclusion of the salon today, I saw Michelle standing back, being softer, taking her time, learning to be a little more conscious of herself in the world and how she moves through the world. You have wonderful natural body movements and you've picked it up very, very rapidly, quite frankly. Well, it feels Much really better than, than I expected. And this is just reaching inside yourself and letting the softer side come out. Right. It's Michelle's on the outside That's now. It. She is you. Yes.
the physical differences between men and women begin with the face. I think with surgeries, you tend to want to change your face first because that tends to allow you to pass easier in public. For many male to female transsexuals, the defining moment in their transition is facial feminization surgery. Facial feminization surgery is a surgery to uh, change a masculine skull uh, to a female uh, skull, getting rid of the masculine characteristics. And when one does that, uh, the feminine face shows through. Elizabeth underwent a series of facial surgeries two years ago to complete her transition to female. As I was transitioning, I realized that I was a very, very Great, ugly man in a dress. There is no doubt about that. And I tried my best to, to do what I could to improve my looks. And I did the best I could with what I had. So that's why I decided to go to Dr. Osterhout. Elizabeth was one of Dr. Douglas Osterhout's star patients. In uh, feminizing uh, Elizabeth's scalp, uh, we cut away uh, the prominence of the forehead. My nose, he gave me a nose job. We set uh, the nose back into a female position. Redesign my chin, my jawline. We reduce the chin by taking out a piece of bone in the middle, and I've also narrowed it. It's very wide. And also reduce some of the muscles in my cheeks. Facial feminization is a major surgery. It takes longer to transform a face than it does to transplant a heart. Between 8 and 12 hours under the knife to achieve this. I can't guarantee beauty, uh, but I think what we can deliver is femininity. What I want for them is that they're lying in bed at 7 o'clock on Saturday morning. The doorbell rings. They've done nothing for themselves. They've tossed on a non-gender bathrobe. They go to the front door, and the person says, I'm sorry to bother you, ma'am, but I want them to be that female. I want them to uh, be obvious female, no matter what they're wearing, what their uh, cosmetics are, what their uh, jewelry, uh, et cetera. For Elizabeth, Facial feminization was the breakthrough in gaining acceptance as a woman, even more important than sex reassignment surgery. Just to be quite honest with you, I mean, my, my SRS surgery was something that was great, but to me it was like removing something that just didn't belong there. It, it wasn't an enlightenment issue, it was just simply something that needed to be done. But changing my face was by far the most enlightening moment of my life. It was something that made me who I was. That's what gave me my, my start on life. I'm just ready for this to come off for sure. This is Aiden's first checkup with Dr. Brownstein since chest reconstruction surgery a week ago. Did you have much pain? Eh, more like discomfort. No real pain. Okay, now the graft is fine. Okay. Pink. In another four to six weeks, Aiden can resume his gym work, adding muscle to the cosmetic transformation that Dr. Brownstein has achieved. Sit. Very good. Check it out. All right. My shirt actually fits the way it's supposed to now. That's cool. The first time I looked in the mirror was like an amazing feeling. I had thought a lot about what would I look like once I had finally had the surgery and like, you know, what would my new dimension sort of be? But the first time I saw my like totally flat chest, I was like just amazed. I was like, this can't be real. This can't really be me. This is the high point of Aiden's transition so far. Now it's Michael's turn to step up. Your trip been so far? It's been very exciting, uh, very hectic, but I've learned. Now that Michael has made the decision to become Michelle, a necessary part of his transition is therapy. Would you like to tell me a little bit about what's going on? Yes, the, the point I'm at now in my transition is getting close to the point where I will go full time. Mm -hmm.
Um, it's also the point where the important people in my life may have trouble accepting me. Sex change is not just about one person becoming another. It affects all the people who have formed meaningful relationships with Michael. Who are they? Who's in your family? I have, I have four sons, a wife. The hardest part is how this transition affects family and friends, co-workers, because if, for an older trans person such as Michelle, you have a whole life built in the male gender role. So to transition her whole life and bring along all the other people in her life can be very difficult. Michael's wife will have the greatest difficulty dealing with the change. I mean, she's the primary concern at this point anyway is with your spouse and your children who are living at home, I would right. assume. Right, right. I'm very scared. We're talking about a marriage of 20 years. It's my second marriage, but it's she's the love of my life, my soulmate, and I don't want to lose her. But at the same time, if I don't take care of my own needs, there will be no Michael for her to love. There will be no one there. You know, I'll just be a shell if I'm even around. So she would prefer that you stay male? Yes. And she could ha keep her husband? Right. Okay. Yeah, she... She's, she's heterosexual? She's heterosexual, so it's... To her credit, she's made a lot of concessions mm -hmm. and very, has been very supportive. You know, but mm -hmm. I know there's a limit to how far she'll go. You know, the limit if I transition all the way fully, then that marriage will be over. And she's told me that. So. Not, a, not a very good situation, but I don't have a choice and I can't blame her for the way she feels. partner is one of the many complications about being transsexual. I mean, look at me. If I'm considering dating someone, you know, there's no roadmap for when do you tell, how do you tell, and I guess for some people, if you tell. Um, there's, no, there's no roadmap for how, what's the right time if you tell too soon, uh, you're being really presumptuous, and if you wait too long, then you're risking someone feeling tricked. It's a real scary thing to become intimate with another person. And I think those of us who don't have gender variants or who don't have transsexual bodies um, often gloss over how scary that intimacy is. And I think this is another almost virtue in a way. If we turn it around and look at it from a different perspective, that transsexual people really have to get serious about that intimacy because it does mean being vulnerable, and we know it, whereas other people get to forget it. Just because someone is changing their physical gender doesn't mean they were gay to start with. A recent study showed that one in four men who transitioned to female remain sexually attracted to women. You're talking about sexual orientation, which is totally different than gender. I don't know at this point if my orientation will change. As a male, I'm heterosexual and I am attracted to women. And as far as I know, that attraction has stayed the same. But it's, I'm, I'm not sure of the statistics, but I believe that about half of us, after we go through transition, actually switch. So we're still heterosexual, but now we're the other way. Lucas is also a sexual paradox. It's funny, I'm more in touch with my female side now. Whereas before, I, you know, I was walled off. There was a part of me that was walled off. You know, the, the myth of the, the testosterone producing a tough hide is certainly not my case at all. It, it, anything but. <laughs> when a female, Lucas was lesbian. Now transitioned to a male, his sexual preference has shifted. Lucas is now attracted to men. All to say it's allowed me to uncover parts of me that I never would have tapped into before, and it's freed me up. It's brought me into the present day. Now I can relate to someone on their own grounds and on my own grounds instead of my, the ghosts from my past manipulating my emotions for me. Oh, really? Only that shot. The love of Rob's life is Elizabeth. So we met 
and uh, just kind of like real casual. We sat at the bar, had a couple of drinks, and, and that was pretty much it. It kind of took my breath away at first. I was like, I can't believe that this person has any interest in me at all. Rob knew from the start that Elizabeth had a past, but he wasn't prepared for when she told him that she was once a man called Lee. Shocked. I mean, I knew, but I didn't believe it. Just by the pictures and seeing her in person and everything like that, I couldn't see it. I still can't see it. It was amazing that she didn't sound like a guy, didn't look like a guy, didn't never, it would have never dawned on my mind that she used to be her former self. Elizabeth completed her gender change two years ago. The rest of her life is now taking shape. I want to have somebody in my life for the rest of my life, somebody I can grow old with, we can play jokes on each other, just have a great time. We can hug each other when we need to. Um, you know, sure, somebody to actually, when you go to sleep at night, they're there beside you. A group of transsexual women was surveyed about sex after surgery. Nearly half said they had successfully kept their previous gender a secret from all sexual partners. More than half were living in permanent relationships. She used to be a different person. Everybody used to be a different person at some point in their life, and at some point in their life they made a change. Hers is probably more drastic than anybody else would attempt to take, but I feel very lucky. As beautiful as she is and uh, compassionate and loving as she is, I just didn't think I could find somebody like that. Okay, so what I could do actually is I could just email you both those contacts. Lucas Walther now works as a community counselor with the Transgender Health Program in Vancouver, Canada. Who is, um, they could hook you up to whoever. Your lives are are based on your gender. You you have a wife or a husband or kids or you know it's your social standing. It's all so gender oriented. There's no good time to change. There's no good time to tell everybody that in fact, you know, you're not this, you're that. It was his own experience of receiving help that set Lucas on this career path. I went to my doctor, and I was so scared to say it out loud. You know, it's not as bad now, I suppose, in major centers, but at the time, there was just such a huge um, stigma around the word transsexual. But I talked to my doctor, who didn't know anything about it much, but she said, well, there's, a, there's an internationally renowned gender clinic right here in Vancouver. And so I finally went in to talk to them, and, you know, there's a certain, there's a certain um, air freshener that they use in that building, and to this day, when I smell it, uh, I can't, I get emotional, because I, when I walked in there, it's like I was going home. <laughs> so... To go into a place where I know there's people who can help me get to myself, who understand, and they're not going to be alarmed or disgusted or concerned about my mental health. They're going to understand, and they're going to help me get where I need to go. Even now, so many years later, it's been eight, ten years later, it's still a very moving thing for me to recall. Sex reassignment surgery takes a toll, both physical and financial, on the body. But it's the toll on relationships that Lucas has to prepare his clients for. Because it, it just it upsets everybody's apple carts. And people do do that. Uh, families do stay together and families do fall apart. But they don't call this a hero's journey for nothing. I never thought I could look this good. Ever in a million years. This is great. And this is what I get to wear the first time out, which is even better. This is the moment when Michelle's life begins. She's about to step out in public for the first time. Yes, it's a little bit of a, of a big first step, but uh, it feels good. You're ready. Yes, I am ready. You're definitely ready. I think so. Look out, world. Ah, here she comes. That's here fine. she comes. I don't feel ashamed anymore. I feel like myself completely, and I feel confident, and I'm ready to go out and be this way. 
this is how I would like to appear and for the world to treat me every day um, as a woman, just an ordinary woman. Two days ago, Michael arrived in San Francisco. It's been an intensive 48 hours gender makeover, finding the inner female and bringing her to the surface. Yeah, it's basically the first time in my whole life that I have felt like the outside matched the inside. And I won't say it's the best, very best day in my life. I think that was my wedding day or when I had my kids. But this was for me. And it is the first day of my new life that I will be Michelle. Good evening, ladies. Hello. Hi there. How, How are, are you? Doing I'm nice. doing very well. How are you? When the waiter announced our presence, hello, ladies. That was a, a wonderful feeling that I don't get very often to be recognized as a woman, and that's what this whole thing has been about. That's a mouthful. Aiden has also arrived. It's been three weeks since chest reconstruction surgery. Life since the operation has been pretty good. It has been pretty easy to just assume like a male role and just sort of fit into that. A lot easier than I thought it would be. It sort of comes naturally to me. I definitely don't regret that my breasts are gone. There hasn't been a single second where I've like, wished I had them back or questioned if this was the right thing to do or like sort of mourned to that sort of part of my body disappearing. Since I've had surgery, nobody has looked at me funny or even thought that I might be anything other than like biologically male. And I haven't felt anything other than like a real man. Um, Whereas before, I definitely didn't feel that way, and I don't think anybody really thought I looked like a man. Michelle has taken the biggest steps so far in her transition. The rest of her journey will be a great deal harder. I'm very confident. I know I have a long ways to go, and many more obstacles to overcome, but I, I now have a real basic confidence, I think, it's a, a big booster to get, get me through transition. Tomorrow, she'll return to her wife and kids to resolve the life of Michael. For their sake, she won't hurry transition. But after this weekend, it's now only a matter of time before she'll be Michelle every day. I'm thankful for what I accomplished as a man and my family and my kids, but I know things will change in the future and the future is going to come and I'm going to march on. I think Michelle is actually quite prepared. I think none of us can anticipate what's going to happen, particularly with something as profound as the gender shift and the impact that it has on other people. It's my life, it has to work. <laughs> I only have 20 or 30 years left on this world and I want it to be right. You know, I've already spent 40 some years in the wrong body, so it's, it's imperative. It's me. Aiden has now entered a man's world, but he's seeing it through the eyes of someone who once lived as a woman. I think that transgender people have a totally unique perspective. Um, I really wouldn't trade it, but it's just amazing to be able to think about things the way I used to relate to them as a woman and now as a man, or how people relate to me. In the coming years, Aiden will continue with hormone therapy. He has no plans to undergo further sex reassignment surgery. This is like probably the most important step I'll ever take. Having things that I still want to achieve ahead of me, job change, go back to school. I can sort of do them with a clear mind before it's always conflicted, always sort of just like there was some conflict I couldn't quite put my finger on. For the first time in his life, Aiden is looking at the future with confidence. From this point forward, it's just about being who I am and not trying to be something um, or wanting to be something, but just being who I am. Michael, transition is not about changing their sex. It's about affirming their gender, bringing their bodies in line with their brains. Lucas called it a hero's journey. 
It's a journey from which there is no turning back. Thank you.